Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll explain the auto discharge technology that DJI has engineered into the batteries for the Mini 2 and why it may not be working quite the way you expect it to in certain situations. Now, I know this is an incredibly popular topic, and I know that because we've been deluged this week with emails and voicemails and YouTube comments asking about the auto discharge not kicking in. And my first thought when I started reading through those emails was, man, do we have a lot of nerdy viewers out there? And that's a great thing. I love answering those kind of questions. But when I get a lot of questions that are very similar, I don't want to just try and answer them because 500 emails, I'll be at the desk all day typing. I'll never get outside and fly. So I thought, perfect time for a clip. Let me sit down. It's springtime. There's a lot of new flyers out there. A lot of flyers that are new to LiPo technology. Let me explain the basis behind LiPo technology in general and why that's chosen to fly drones. But more importantly, when I hear about a problem like that, I don't like to just do a clip and parrot everybody else telling you that if you leave the batteries in the charging hub or you leave the battery in the drone, they're not going to kick on with that auto discharge mechanism. That's the problem. But for me, investigating why that problem's happening and finding a solution that gets you around that problem is really what the channel's all about. So the minute I hear about a problem like that, the nerd in me kicks in and I start thinking about, well, why is that happening? Why does it not discharge here, but discharge just fine on the desk? And why does it work on every other drone that DJI's made? So I spent a lot of time this week testing and a lot of time thinking about it. I had my nerd hat on quite a bit, and I've come up with a couple of what I think are reasons why it's not happening. I have my fingers crossed that DJI is working on a firmware update that'll take care of it, but I also have my concerns that they may not be able to fix it. So I wanna give you a couple of quick fixes that will force those batteries to auto discharge on their own. And I'll, I'll go through that at the end of this. But anyway, let me get started with the technology. So the batteries that are used in drones today are some of the most energy dense products on the planet. And I have two drones in front of me. I have the Mavic Mini here and the Mini 2 over here. Now, the big difference between these two from a battery perspective, besides the color, this one's black and that one's gray, is that the Mini used lithium ion batteries. It was the first drone and the only one I know of so far from DJI, maybe the Tello, that uses lithium ion batteries. All the other drones use lithium polymer batteries batteries, and there's a slight difference in the chemistry behind these, but essentially they share the same bloodline, if you will, from a chemistry perspective. So inside these batteries, you've got a combination of chemistry that produces incredibly powerful batteries in a really small space. So just for this one alone, the battery itself is about seven and a half volts. It's got, it's got like 14 or 17 watt hours of energy inside this little battery pack here. So they're incredibly dense. They're lightweight for the amount of energy they carry, but the challenge there is that they can be a little bit touchy in two certain circumstances. So lithium polymer technology does not like to be either totally discharged or fully charged. Think of it as sort of a spring. You don't want to wind that spring up and have to worry about it unraveling on its own. So you want to keep these batteries somewhere in that 40% to 65% charge level. That's where they're happiest. If you fully charge them up, they're sitting there going, all right, I'm fully, they're like somebody in caffeine, like when I've had too much coffee, they're like, okay, look, I got a discharge. I got a discharge, plug me into something. So that's a dangerous place for them to be. And that'll damage the battery. And over time, it'll reduce the battery's ability to maintain a charge. The other place that's incredibly dangerous is at the low end of the charge. So if it falls down, to 20%, 15%, 10%, the battery at that point starts to get worried and it goes into hibernation mode. So the batteries will actually monitor what's going on with the cells and say, oh my gosh, I'm getting towards 10%. If it hits 10%, the battery goes to sleep. So it looks like a dead battery, but there's really a residual charge in there that you can wake it back up the minute you start charging it. So again, good on DJI because they're not selling you sort of naked LiPo packs. Like if you're flying FPV or other drones that use just a little battery pack that has two connections on it, that battery has to be charged by a smart charger and you have to control how the current's being fired at it, what voltage you're firing at it, how big the cell is. With DJI batteries, you don't have to worry about any of that because again, the geniuses over at DJI have said, look, we're going to build a lithium ion, or in this case, lithium polymer battery pack. And inside here, we're going to build a little bit of brains called a controller that will guide the energy going into the battery. It'll balance it across the cells. It'll protect it from overcurrent, over voltage. It'll protect it against short circuits or over drain. It'll protect it against temperature variance. And inside there, that controller is monitoring both of those cells constantly to keep you safe and to keep the battery safe and give you the longest life possible. Now you can damage it a couple of different ways. The easiest way to damage a lithium polymer battery is temperature. Too cold or too hot is a bad thing. Now the analogy I like to use when I'm talking about LiPo batteries is, I want you to think of these batteries as a brand new puppy that you just brought home. 
and you've got to treat them that way. So if you're if you're going to leave the puppy in your car and it's going to be 85 degrees, that's not a good thing for the puppy. It's not a good thing for the batteries. Same thing in the winter time. You don't want to leave them in your garage. You wouldn't leave your puppy in the garage when it's freezing outside. So keep these at a moderate temperature. I always say if you're going to store them for length of period of time, store them inside of a fireproof container. A lot of people use ammo boxes or tackle boxes, something metal that, God forbid, something happens with the batteries. It's sort of contained inside that in that box. But anyway, lithium polymer batteries, again, keep them at 40 to 65 percent. They're going to last you a long time. They're going to be ready to go. Now, the challenge is if you fly a lot, you may want to charge them the night before and then they're sitting fully charged all night. That's really not a great thing. I typically will fly them till I get them down to about 30 percent and I'll put them away. And then the next morning when I'm going out to fly, I'll put them on a multi-charger, charge them up and head out the door. So they're fully charged when I leave. When I come home, they're fairly depleted. And that's probably the safest way to go. But again, the controller inside there handles the charge and discharge of the battery in both of these, and it keeps them incredibly safe. So again, what I said was when it's fully charged, it's going to look at that and say, okay, Rick, you left these batteries fully charged. The controller's thinking this. You left these batteries fully charged. I'm going to slowly discharge them. So after 24 hours, if you haven't paid attention to the batteries, I'm taking them down to 95%. After 72 hours, I'm taking them down to 70 plus percent. So I'm going to, I'm going to protect your batteries because you're goofy, Rick. You're not paying attention to them. On the other end of the spectrum, if you forget about the batteries over the winter and you leave them in a box someplace in the basement, and don't charge them for six or seven months, they're going to slowly decay to the point where they get below 10%, the batteries are going to go into hibernation mode. So if you come to the battery and you turn it on, you don't see any lights lighting up, charge that right away. There's a good chance you can resurrect that battery from that hibernation mode and then fully charge it again. And don't do that. Always visit your batteries a couple times over those long winters to make sure that they're fully charged. All right, so the controller does that standalone with the battery. Here's where it gets tricky. The battery also communicates from the controller and the battery to the electronics in the drone. So the battery itself isn't just providing voltage and current to the drone to fly, which is really important. It's also providing information about the battery health to the drone. It's checking both cells to make their working okay. The temperature's good. Everything else is good. It's telling the drone, hey, we're in good shape. Here's the charge level. If you're flying out the 1,500 feet, you got another six minutes before I run out of enough energy to get you back to the landing mat. So there's a constant conversation going on between these two units. Now, here's where the problem is. This is a battery of a Mavic Air 2. You'll notice that the power button on this battery is on the battery. Where's the power button on the mini batteries? There is none. You can't turn the battery on from inside the battery. You can only turn it on by hitting the power button in the drone. And if you look closely at the battery connections, and I've got a blow up now, you'll find that the battery has six connections on it. It's actually got three pairs of two connections. Two of those are ground, two of those are positive voltage, and two of those are communication lines between the battery and the drone. And that's really important because the battery tells the drone all the things it needs to know to continue to fly. And then the drone's going to make decisions based on that communication on when it returns to home, the information it gives you on the information screen of how much battery levels left is all communicated through those communication lines. The challenge with the Mini 2 is that that communication line has to talk to this switch on the bottom to turn it on. Whereas here, it can sort of go to sleep and this button, if I tore this apart, I'll bet you it's the case, that button has a separate input to the controller inside here. This one doesn't have a power on button. So it's relying on the drone or the hub to turn it on. And the sense line would have to stay live to do that. So this battery can't go to sleep because there's no other way for me to turn it on but to hit the, hit the button on the drone and communicate between those two. So it's sort of, it's in slumber mode all the time but it's gotta be ready to spring into action at a moment's notice when that button is pushed. So I think the challenge is with the self-contained batteries and pretty much every other drone DJI makes, the on button's right of the battery, with this one it isn't. And again, having a connection between that button and the controller to say, look, you can go to sleep, but when I hit that button, I want you to wake up. This one has to keep that communication channel open. So from a programming perspective, it's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky to figure that out because if the only connection between the battery and the drone are those two communication lines, they kind of have to be watching all the time, you know, <laughs> for the drone to wake up. I don't know how you put it to sleep, but still have it awake enough to pay attention to the drone. So again, I wouldn't bet against DJI. I'm sure their engineers are hard at work on this to sort this problem out. But for now, I think the challenge is that you know for a fact that if you leave them in the charging hub, they're not going to auto discharge because they're sitting there waiting for you to push this button on the side and connect something up externally. And also there's a controller inside here that keeps track of what's going on with the battery. So there's actually communication through those same communication lines between the batteries and the hub. And that's what it uses to determine which one's least charged, which one's next charge, which one's full charge, and deciding which one it's going to charge in order. So the communication between the batteries and the hub and the drone are things that are kind of tripping you up when you think about this auto discharge mechanism. All right, having said all that, how do you get around it? 
Well, the simple answer is don't store the batteries in the hub. Everybody will tell you that. If you watch any of the clips out there, they'll say to you, look, if I leave this battery on the table, it's going to auto discharge on its own. It's going to do exactly what it's programmed to do because there's nothing, nothing touching those communication lines at this point, And it's going to go into auto discharge mode after a day. It's going to knock it down 5%. And after 72 hours, I think it goes down to 75%. The same problem with the drone. If you leave it in the drone, it's touching the drone. Those communication lines are touching the internal controller and it's not gonna discharge. So the first way you fix the problem is to leave the batteries outside of the drone. Now my recommendation is if you bought the Flymore combination and you've got the charging hub, you can actually, they fit and they're a little bit tight. You can spin them around in the hub and not have the connections touch the front. So you can see they're backwards. Normally they go in this way. If you spin them around backwards, you can keep them in the hub and they're not gonna to touch those communication lines. And lo and behold, they'll auto discharge on their own. Now you can't leave it halfway out of the drone. So my suggestion is if you have the Flymore combo, put them backwards in the hub. When they're fully charged, they'll auto discharge on their own if you don't use them right away. Or you can pick up something like this LiPo safety bag. This is a, a battery protection bag that's made out of a special fireproof material. It actually has fire retardant material inside of it. These batteries fit in here just fine. And I like these a lot because what you get with this, boy, that's really in there tight. What you get with these LiPo battery bags is number one, it protects it if again, heaven forbid, the battery bursts into flames, at least it's contained inside the bag and it's fire retardant so you can deal with it. The other thing it does is protect the battery from damage because one of the reasons you get lipo fires on lithium polymer batteries is if you pierce that outside skin and those chemicals mix or they are exposed to air or water, even worse, that's when strange things start to happen. The batteries will go nonlinear because they're fully charged like that wound spring and you've just pulled the pin out and that spring's gonna unwind really quick. The battery's gonna wanna discharge and if you've ever seen a lipo fire and they're rare, I'm not trying to scare you, but if you've ever seen a lipo fire, they burn hot, they burn forever until the chemicals are extinguished. They'll burn through the floor, they'll burn through the second floor. It's sort of like one of those, you know, those uh, nuclear blobs that you see in the horror movies where it hits the floor, burns through, hits the next floor, burns through. That's exactly what they're gonna do. So the only way you can put them out, you can't hit them with water because that just excites them even more. You've gotta hit them with sand or some kind of powder to put them out. And again, you're never gonna have to deal with that because I'm sure you're gonna be a responsible drone flyer. Protect your batteries, only charge them when you're about to use them and let them auto discharge when you can. All right, so that's pretty much it for that part of it. Now, the last thing I'll say is that you could pick on DJI and say, look, how'd you miss that? Well, these are lithium ion batteries. Now, lithium ion batteries, curiously, don't require the auto discharge. And the Mini 1 didn't do the auto discharge. Basically, they'd sit in the hub, they'd sit there fully charged and be happy. Lithium ion batteries are a little bit safer in a fully charged uh, state than lithium polymers are. They're less resistant to you know, memory effects and things like that, or, or did I charge it enough, didn't I charge it enough? And that's basically what you have in your phone, you have in your laptop, or typically lithium ion batteries. And they basically took this technology and probably a lot of the programming behind it and transferred that over to the Mini 2 when they designed this product. And somewhere along the line, somebody missed something on auto discharge function. And again, if I were a programmer and I spent a lot of time around programming, I'm sure that I could come up with a logic diagram that would be able to fix this and then code that into programming. And I'm sure there are brilliant people working at DJI or they're way smarter and better looking than I am that are gonna code that and make that change. So watch for a firmware update. When I see that come out, I'll definitely talk about it on the channel. But in the meantime, if you're flying the Mini 2 and you like to fully charge your batteries and you may not get to use them for a couple of days, if you've got the charging hub, flip them around the charging hub, store them in that. If you've got one in the drone, get a LiPo bag. We have LiPo bags on the website. Put it in a LiPo bag, throw it in your bag and you'll be in really good shape. And again, I'm assuming there's gonna be firmware coming, but until I see it, I can't really talk about it. And there's a small part of me that thinks, I'll be really curious to see how they fix that. And I, and I know they're working on it, I've, I've heard stories that I'm working on it, but without having a direct connection to a power switch, I don't know how you discern between I'm trying to turn it on or I'm not paying attention. Those two states are, are mutually exclusive, quite honestly. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I hope I didn't get too nerdy for you today, but I felt like I had to address this because there's a lot of people out there talking about it and worrying about it and everything else. Simple answer is keep them out of the drone, keep them out of the hub, put them in a lipo bag and you'll be in really good shape. That's pretty much it for today. So if you have any other questions, drop those in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I gotta be honest, I've been out flying like crazy because we got some beautiful weather in Jersey. And again, the birds are chirping, the trees are springing to life, and it's just a beautiful place to be right now. So I've got the brand new Air 2S. I'm flying that like crazy. This guy's in the air probably six hours a week and I've still got this guy up in the air flying. So I've been out busy in the field, but I promise you there's a lot more content coming. And again, if you've got questions, let me know. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we're about to start the Drone Valley team next month. Hit that subscribe button down the bottom and join that team. Actually join the family first. And if you think there's value in the team, you can join the team as well. But we've got a lot of giveaways coming up in May and a lot of other cool surprises that are coming around high tech gear as well. So thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, happy flying.